Uh, welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Regina. Uh, we're happy to have, uh, what is this, the third uh, Sunday of Easter. And um, I'm not going to uh, read the whole gospel reading. It's quite lengthy, but uh, we're going to have a, a choir number that's interjected. Some people are saying, how did you get the choir in here? And uh, it's from uh, past uh, tapings that we've had before the uh, isolation. We're not bringing choir members and putting them at threat. Um, so uh, thank you for being with us, and I hope you find uh, some uh, meaning in our service this morning.
surprised that uh, this man didn't know what was going on in Jerusalem. Anyway, uh, they spent the, the day walking with him, and then I'll read the end of the gospel reading, starting at verse 28. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with him. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, open our hearts and our minds to the preaching of your word. I want to uh, share a uh, story. It's uh, one of my uh, favorite stories. Uh, I can't forget where I where I found it, but it's a it's a very apt story for the message that I have this morning. And it's a story about a monastery in the old country. And at one time, it was uh, one of the most prominent monasteries in the world. And people came from men came from all over the world to be able to study here and uh, to be silent and to become more spiritual and more connected with God. But at this time, uh, the monastery had fallen on hard times, and there was just uh, a dozen people now staying there at the monastery, and the abbot wondered what was happening. And he was so troubled, he uh, went to a neighboring village. Outside the village, there was uh, what they considered a, a sage, a wise man, and he counseled with him and said, what is happening? And uh, after some thought, after the, man, the abbot had explained what was happening, um, the wise man said to him, the Messiah dwells among you. And the abbot looked quite astonished, and he said, what do you mean? And that's the only words he repeated, the Messiah dwells among you. The man was confused at first, and then as he journeyed home, he began to repeat those words, the Messiah dwells amongst us. The Messiah dwells amongst us. And when he got back to the monastery, that's what he shared with the followers that were there. The Messiah is one of us. And they all looked around at each other, and at first were frightened and shocked and astonished, but then they began to wonder, are you the Messiah? Is he the Messiah? Who is the Messiah amongst us? And they began treating each other differently. They began walking with a bounce in their step 
and they began holding their heads up higher as they believed that the Messiah dwelt among them. And the word soon spread around the neighboring villages and around the whole Christian community at that time, and soon the numbers were filled to overflowing, and they all believed that the Messiah was one of them. The Gospel reading that we have this morning is one of those uh, texts that we read every year at this time, and it's a story of the two disciples walking along uh, the road to Emmaus outside of Jerusalem, and a stranger joins them, and they begin to talk about the things that have been happening. And ever since I was a kid, I, I remember seven, eight, nine years old, I asked this question, how come they didn't recognize Jesus. If they had spent three years of their life every day with this man, how come they didn't recognize Jesus? How come the women, when Jesus appeared to them at the tomb, they didn't recognize Jesus? How come in, on other post-resurrection occurrences they didn't recognize him? Is it because uh, Jesus has changed his appearance? Or is this part of the resurrection story? Jesus looked different. And is the truth for us in this post-resurrection time is that the Messiah is amongst us. The Messiah is with us, but you probably won't recognize him. If Jesus walked with us today, if Jesus was a part of this congregation, what would he look like? We all have our preconceived notions and understandings about what Jesus would look like, but it's probably nothing like that. I'm very concerned uh, with this uh, virus thing that is uh, sweeping around the world about how we are going to act going forward with one another. You see it already, uh, the fear in people's eyes of one another. When we're at the grocery store, we step aside and we don't want to get too close to people. When we're walking along the bike path, people will make a, a huge detour so they don't have to get close to, uh, to other people. And I notice that people don't even look up and smile and uh, say hi. And, uh, you know, from 20 feet, I don't think there's been any instances of sharing the virus by smiling or saying hi. We can't lose that closeness, especially here in Saskatchewan. This is one of, one of the beautiful things that we have here in Saskatchewan, is the closeness that we have with one another. We cannot allow this virus to divide us. And we cannot allow this virus to divide us as nations, as people, and as races. And we, we hear stories about uh, people uh, um, saying very hurtful things, and uh, we hear stories about countries that are refusing uh, people into their countries and uh, stopping the immigration process. This is not what we should become. We have to continue to be open to other people, and we have to believe. Just like this post-resurrection story this morning, that a stranger among us might be the Messiah. The person in our classroom that we might least expect might be the Messiah. The person down the street that we don't really know and we think who is so different from us might be the Messiah. If we believe that as we walked along the pathway and everybody coming towards us might be Jesus, we might smile, we might greet that person and feel differently towards them if we truly believe. I believe that's what the resurrection, the post-resurrection accounts are all about, is that they didn't recognize Jesus because he looked differently. And maybe today, as he lives and walks amongst us, he looks a lot different than we might think he looks like. 
she might look a lot differently than we expect her to look like. The Messiah dwells amongst us. Amen. upon us with his favor 
and give us his peace. Amen.